What's impossible to have a conversation with? A duck? Welcome to Monkey Boy's Toys. And welcome to the item seating furniture that is... The sofa! Thanks very much for joining me again. Here's a tin of tuna to look at. Now, with Halloween fast approaching, I thought that this week we could take a look at some gruesome figures. Uh, and today I'm going to be showing the second series of McFarlane's Tortured Souls figures. Uh, now, you may remember last Halloween I did show the, the series one of the Tortured Souls figures. Um, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and check that video out if you would like to. Um, but for those that haven't seen the video, um, I'm just going to do a quick recap and a bit of a run up to the to the series so that we're all on the same page as to what we're talking about. Uh, but before I do that, I think I, I need to remove the, the can of tuna from the shot. There we go. OK, so I'll pop some pictures up to illustrate uh, some of the things I'm talking about. But um, McFarlane uh, teamed up with Clive Barker, uh, the famous horror author, uh, in 2001 uh, to produce a series of I guess never before seen uh, highly detailed, very gruesome uh, figures. Uh, now the line was called Tortured Souls. I've got an example of, of one of the first figures here. Um, as you can see, they were very gruesome uh, figures, highly detailed. Uh, I don't think I've seen action figures quite this detailed before. Um, there was an awful lot of work went into these sculpts. Um, the designs were created uh, by Clive Barker and Todd McFarlane together. Uh, now, in the first series, there were six figures, uh, of which I have five. Um, and they were all uh, kind of quite, uh, I guess, S&M uh, related in, in their appearance. A lot of them have sort of bondage gear on and, and that sort of thing. Lots of black leather and, and buckles and chains and stuff. Uh, now, each figure in the first series was based on uh, a, a novella uh, called Tortured Souls by Clive Barker, and each figure came with, um, I guess, a, a thousand, two thousand page um, word uh, um, short story um, detailing uh, some of the some of the background to each character. Um, I guess each chapter was a sort of morality tale of sorts. They were they were very gruesome, um, not for the faint of heart, but it it's, it was set in the world of Primordium. Um, and it, it sort of explains who the characters are and, and how they're connected to each other. And it, it's quite an interesting read. So, yeah, that's that's how they were, were presented in, ser in Series 1. Um, so they were quite cool. Uh, now, the series was quite successful. Uh, and so on the back of that, um, a decision was made to produce a second wave of the figures uh, called Tortured Souls 2, uh, The Fallen. Um, and I do have a complete set of those to show you today. Um, so I guess we'll we'll dive in um, at random with with one of the one of those figures, and here we have Moribundi. Now I have showed this on the channel before, I believe, but I, I think it's worth having another look at. I'm um, just as part of the set. Um, so here we see um, the, the blister bubble um, showcasing the figure inside. Uh, obviously, we can't see the back of the figure, which is also very highly detailed. Um, but I won't be opening these. I'll be leaving these on the bubble. Um, now th these figures did not come with any story with them so this this is just a piece of um, artwork on the side there is there is no booklet containing any any sort of story there um, with these guys but here we see Moribundi now he's a he's a, a fairly uh, well I guess Moribund chap um, he appears to have been flayed significantly there are lots of um, open sections on his body where the skin has been peeled back and removed and he's he's sort of attached to this kind of weird sort of clothing rack almost um, that he's suspended on sort of crucified on here um, with you know he's got his skull or his scalp peeled back um, he's impaled onto this onto this device um, he seems to have oh, I don't know maybe three quarters of a leg this side and maybe half a leg this side um, so it's it's quite quite gruesome as you can see they are not really for children uh, these these uh, toys um, this particular example that I've got here, you can see against my background that the, the uh, bubble or the, the packaging has started to go yellow. Um, now, unfortunately, this was a common uh, problem with, with Series 1 and Series 2. Um, they do go very yellow if they're kept in the sun. It's, it's something to do with the, the quality of plastic that was used. It, it tends to yellow very easily. And there are some shocking examples of, of, uh, of ones that have become incredibly yellow. Um, I'll pop a couple of pictures up on screen so you can see 
um, to what extent they can they can turn. Um, I, I've tried to get the best examples possible. This is probably the worst that I've got in terms of the, the yellowing. Most of the others I have are, are better than that. But um, anyway, yeah, so there's, there's Moribundi. Um, let's pop him to the back here. Uh, I doubt I'll get them all on camera or all on screen together, but never mind. Uh, let's have a look at the, the next figure. Um, and here we have Suffering Bob. Um, he's a, a kind of strange, sort of obese, um, like, uh, sort of malformed person, perhaps. Um, we can see he's got a few faces um, in varying stages of development. Um, and he also has what appears to be a man coming out of his stomach. And that man is wearing a gimp mask. So a little nod there to the S and M origins of the of the line. Uh, again, he's missing legs, um, and the there's a, there's a lot of sort of flaying and sewing and various things going on with this figure. So again, deeply deeply unpleasant. This this tortured souls uh, two line um, was a bit more visceral, I guess, in its uh, in its designs. Um, there, there was less focus on the bondage S and M aspect, and more of a focus on, um, I guess, the integration of man and mechanics, um, because most of the characters do have these sort of, uh, sort of vaguely, um, I don't know what you would call it, this, this sort of engineering and these sort of gears and blades and and things going on, and they often have those integrated into their bodies somehow. Um, so absolutely lovely stuff um you know perfect for little johnny on his uh on the day when he's allowed to take his toys into school take a couple of these in and frighten everyone to bits uh, you can see this one is slightly yellowed um but it's not not anywhere near as bad as it might be uh next up we have zane um again we have a, a little nod to the to the bondage aspect with with his sort of leather dress or whatever it is he's wearing here um but again he's He's, he's become integrated with all these um, bits of machinery, all these, these arms with blades on the end of him. I suppose he looks a bit like a, some sort of twisted and macabre doc, Dr. Octopus um, type figure. Um, he does appear to have both his legs. Um, one of them is quite heavily damaged, but there we go. Um, and he has this contraption that he's sort of standing upon or that's holding him up or who knows? Who knows? I mean, it's, yeah, lovely stuff. Oh, let's just have a quick look at the back of the um, cards. They're all the same. They all have the same uh, design on them. Um, there's no difference between the characters, as far as I'm aware. Um, so, yeah, there's there's that. So, we've got Zane here. Um, don't quite know what's happened to his face. Uh, there appears to be some sort of staples or whatever holding half his face together. I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, but again... A really pleasant figure, uh, as you can see. Uh, next up, we have Feverish. Um, this packaging isn't in the best condition. It was a bit crushed, unfortunately, but um, I was I was happy enough with that. It hadn't gone too yellow, so I was I was happy to to add this to the collection. Um, they do also tend to go a bit brittle over time and crack, but but that's okay. Um, so yes, Feverish is here. Um, very similar to um, one of the characters in the first series called um what was he called can't remember uh, it's completely dropped out of my head I'll, I'll pop a picture up in the corner here of, of the character i'm talking about which is it's kind of similar um it's a, a character with a a gaping maw in, in the stomach um this one uh, doesn't appear to have teeth inside it so this isn't a mouth as such this is just a, a huge cavity in his torso um where presumably these little creatures perhaps came out of um, it's difficult to tell because, as I've said, there wasn't a story um, associated with these these characters, so it's 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 a little bit up in the air as to what's exactly going on here. Um, I believe this. I don't know if this character is suspended like this or if he should be laying on a on a table. Ah, oh, okay. So it, it seems that there's some sort of a gurney that he's lying on here that has wheels on it. So this character is is, is meant to be displayed on its on its back. Um, but yeah, so here we see feverish with various things going on. He appears to have. I'm not sure if that's one of his eyeballs flying out. Um, let's have a look. Is that? Yeah, that appears to be an eyeball that's flying out of his head. Um, and obviously, they're about to do some dental work. 
because they've got the, I don't know what you would call them, oral speculums <laughs> in his mouth. Um, but yeah, there we go. So he's a he's a nice looking chap. Um, lots of dribbles of some sort of uh, torso gravy coming out of him there. Um, so yeah, lovely, lovely stuff. Um, not at all nightmare inducing. So there are the four male characters uh, from series two, um, which leaves us with the, the two female characters. Um, I'll leave my favorite until last. Um, but first up we've got, now I think this is pronounced Soltax. Um, she is, uh, again, slightly s and I suppose, because she's got a bit of leather on her and she's got some fishnets on there. Again, she's got a, a Dr. Octopus feel about her because she has these additional limbs um, sort of protruding from her side. Um, and they are, again, quite mechanically um, designed with sort of pincers and, and that sort of thing. Um, she appears to have uh, one foot and then a, a bionic or mechanical foot uh, there. Uh, her legs are in pretty bad shape from the knee down. Um, so yeah, there she, there she is. Uh, I mean, she's looking fairly, fairly pleased with herself, I suppose. She doesn't seem too disturbed that she's got tubes sort of going in, in and out of her all over the place and, and stuff. Um, so yeah, there's there's uh, that figure. Um, let's pop her, pop her there. Now, which brings me on to the the last figure uh, in the series, uh, and that is Camille Noir. I do like the look of this figure. I think she looks really cool. There's there's an element of of kind of some kind of hideously wrong angelic uh, nature to her, um, because she has this. She has what appears to be a saw blade embedded right the way through her head, which gives this sort of appearance of a, a very disturbing halo. Um, she's standing in quite an angelic pose um, and she has these huge wings. Now, I'm not entirely sure what they are, but a little peak down the down the back. You can't really see it very well in, in the packaging, but a peak down the back would suggest that her back has been opened and that these wings are perhaps uh, formed from her lungs uh, that have been, I guess, filleted and and stretched out. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if, it, if it's if it's lungs, but it does it does appear to be uh, the case that she has some she has her lungs spread out, some sort of hideous wing arrangement. Um, I believe that was a kind of med uh, medieval torture. Um, at one point, they would they would do this, and they would extract people's lungs and and spread them out over their back like wings. Um, so perhaps it's a reference to that. She's got a long, flappy bit of skin coming out of her shin here, which seems a, a bit peculiar. Um, sort of a ribbon of flesh coming out. Uh, and again, we've got lots of uh, mechanical bits and pieces that can be used uh, when displaying her. Um, these obviously look a lot better out of the out of the packaging in, in terms of display, but I, I'm not going to be opening these. Um, and, and to be honest, because they are so intricate, once you, once they get dusty, they are very difficult to clean. Um, so I will be keeping this second series on the on the bubble. Um, but yeah, there we go. So that's a look at the Tortured Souls 2 The Fallen series from McFarlane, uh, from the mind of Clive Barker. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, that little look at those figures if that's not too strange a word to use given the uh, given the nature of the the content but um yeah thanks so much for watching i hope you did enjoy having a look at this line uh, if you did enjoy the video please do give it a thumbs up and share it with any other a duck you may know uh, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already hit the notification bell uh, so you don't miss any future videos and do leave me a comment and tell me exactly what you think of these horrendous figures. There'll be uh, more of the same next week, um, spoiler alert, uh, for, for the main Halloween video. Um, we won't be straying too far from this territory, um, so if you didn't like this video, you're unlikely to enjoy the next one. Um, <laughs> but there we go. Uh, so thanks very much for watching everyone, and uh, I'm going to make like a shepherd and get the flock out of here. See you next time. Bye! I'm not a horse, I'm a pony!